Michigan. This is Grand Tap Media Business TV. My name is Pamela Kai. I'm your host. The spirit of the show is to introduce West Michigan to all the business neighbors and nonprofits and leaders that can help us thrive in our life. And boy, do I have a special guest for you today. I have wanted to have her on my show for a while, and I think it's perfect timing for what's going on in uh, West Michigan learning today. Kids through K through um, K through 12 are now finding themselves more and more being at home doing virtual learning. And some of our parents are kind of getting concerned if their kids are, are getting the learning they need, are they keeping up with their skills, and what they can do to thrive, and how to, how to teach them to be more independent learning. I want to introduce to you a very special friend of mine, Bincy from Kumon Learning Center, and she is going to talk about how special this learning center is, and it's been around for many years, and why she got involved with it, and why as parents, you need to look into this and see if this is, going to, this is the best thing for your child to learn and to help them thrive, to get ready, prepare for whatever they have um, in their future, either it's college, maybe a trade, or being an entrepreneur. I just think having those basic skills can help your child achieve anything. So I want to welcome Bincy to the pro, to the to the show. Now her last name is a little tri tricky, and she says to me, "You know what? You just say Bincy to the rescue." <laughs> and she is the owner of Kumon Learning Center, and I want to her to take over right now and talk about what is Kumon Learning Center and why should parents be so excited to have this in our community. So welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. It's so nice to be here. Um, again, my name is Bincy Teodorescu. My last name is a little bit difficult to, to pronounce. Say that once again. To, Bincy to the rescue. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, remember that one. Bincy to the rescue, right? Okay. Yeah, um, so I've been doing um, Kumon for about 15 years now, and it's a Japanese uh, program. It's based out of Japan. Um, it focuses on just math and reading skills, the two, score, uh, two core skills that are super important for any child to succeed in in school and beyond um, it is a very structured program um, it has a, a testing process involved uh, students and parents come into the center I test the student to figure out where they need to start in the program and then we build uh, their skills up from where they're most comfortable um, it's so, super important for to build confidence um, so right. the curriculum is designed in a way that helps students to succeed well, I did some research on it, and it also teaches them to be um, independent. Absolutely. Be independent, learn yeah. how to their own, yeah. and not feel, I guess, some. let's talk about that, um, how students are. Some, there, there might be parents out there that see that their students are struggling, mm -hmm. that, or they're concerned that they may not be keeping up with what they, you know, the skill level they may think they are yeah and then they go you probably get that right a lot of times parents are unaware of where their child is um, the way the system is set up uh, kindergarten or preschool through about fourth grade things are a little easy um, not a lot of homework you know they're getting um, some support at school but they're not doing a lot outside of school and I truly feel that those years are incredibly critical to build foundation skills and um, if children are struggling in those years that means that later on fifth sixth seventh eighth grade and beyond is going to be a little bit more challenged so it's really really important to build those foundation skills and Kumon really um, gets involved in that arena pretty pretty deeply to help kids with foundation skills well it's been around for like what night i think it said 1952 it's over it? 60 years 60 years now and um yeah it started out in japan and then moved to the u.s and um many um women like me have right. gotten involved in the in the um, in purchasing the franchise um i was in the technology field before um, becoming okay. an inst instructor, sure. and um, it's it's a beautiful program that's really there for the students to succeed. And you said you st uh, st most uh, maybe um, people that own these franchises got into it because their child was struggling, and is that what you what happened with you? Yes, yes, absolutely. So my daughter was in first grade. Um, I have a 22 year old and a 17 year old. Okay. And when the 22 year old was in first grade, she was really struggling with reading. And I looked outside to find a resource for her and found Kumon, fell in love with the curriculum and the me methodology. And I strongly felt that this was something that um, 
that students in our, our community needed. Right. Um, so I actually left my IT career to become a Kumon instructor. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> that one we I've known that since we've been <laughs> friends. But uh, now, look, parents out there that are their their children are now doing more mm -hmm. of their their learning on on computers. Right. Yeah. Their virtual learning. A lot of them are having to take it on themselves. Parents are working mm -hmm. and trying to help teach their kids, at, their children at school. What, as a parent looking at, what do you have? I mean, Kumon, do they have to come to your to your studio or do they, are they your um, learning center or do you have programs online? Because what if they live a little bit away from, you know? Yeah, so it's, Kumon is actually considered a home-based program, okay. but students come to the center um, and get help that they need. Um, they come for testing. Um, prior to COVID, it was mandatory that students attend the center um, at least once a week. Okay. Now we have kind of pivoted. Um, we offer both in in center and outside um, through virtual. Um, so a lot of families, um, they understand the challenges of virtual. Right. Um, they're using online programs or they're printing worksheets at home and making sure the students do it. They don't really have a plan in place to help the kids get to where they need to be. Um, so many parents have told me, I think this year is gonna be a little bit of a waste. And- You know what, I've heard that too. Yeah, I'm and concerned. so Kumon just gives you a plan to help your child succeed. So what I have to, um, to do is make sure that I plan correctly so that the next grade level is not as hard because that's what's gonna happen next year when students are not getting the resources that they need right now. So they are, you know, they're gonna move into the next grade level and feel lost. So that's what we're trying to avoid at the center. Um, both virtual and in class. The virtual is a little bit unique in that our program is paper-based, <laughs> paper and pencil. We're not doing online programs where they're um, doing the problems online. They have to sit down, focus, and do the problems on a piece of paper. How or, important is that? It's so important for fine motor skills um, development, um, focus, um, because kids are distracted online. When they're using their iPad, you know, they could be solving some problems online, but then they get distracted with other things and they, they're not focusing. And our children are really struggling with focus right now. And also to be able to to write. I've seen a lot of challenges with, with students not having strong grip on a pencil to be able to write. And that's right. because they're so used to technology and the swiping and the clicking and the, you know. Well, we, uh, even us, you yep. know, everything just electronic signature. Yeah. I, I can't remember the last time I had a, unless you're signing in for something. Yeah. Signing in, you're not really signing your name. Yep. And Correct. how, now that motor skill, people don't think, I think people today are like, oh, we don't need to have that. But that's right. not necessarily true, is yeah, it? Yeah, in, you... in the real world, you do end up using using those skills pretty extensively, um, you know, especially in, in a job environment. Um, I, I mean, I, I was in the technology field, so I understand the power of technology and the usefulness of technology. But when children are young, learning skills that we've already become experts in, it's important for them to get the training right. um, in those early years. Yeah. Now, as if I was a parent, right, mm -hmm. and I am, you know, I'm seeing my kid, my children do their learning on that, and I'm thinking everything is, they're getting good. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if they're doing very well in my mind, mm -hmm. they should come to the learning center and find out where really you guys are, you know, kind of the experts of really where they should be in their, in their age level and right. grade. Yeah, and, and I'm one of many resources out there, but what I do, what I'm finding is that parents are thinking that um, what they have at school is enough, and parents don't understand the requirements that fifth grade needs, and sixth and seventh, and even high school. So it's easy to just say, okay, my child is doing okay. It's always a good idea to get a second opinion as to how your child is truly doing. 
Um, a lot of times parents will come and say, I just have this gut feeling that my child is struggling. School says it's okay, um, he's, he or she's doing fine, but my gut feeling says there's something missing. Right. And, that, and sometimes parents come because of that. Um, the other reason parents show up is if there's um, a testing involved, a standardized testing, you know, it used to be me, MAP, testing, different mm -hmm. types of testing. And that is also a little bit of an indicator of if the child is struggling or not. Um, so reach out to the resources in your community to make right. sure that your child doesn't struggle. All right, I'm gonna, some of these questions, okay. You know, so how do you know if your child is doing well academically? Academically, This is one of the questions that we, I, we, we were discussing. Mm -hmm. And how, how do I know? I mean, it, it, only way I would really know if I, it was tested at, you know, another another source or whatever. Right. Yeah. So schools do a, a great job um, doing testing for grade level um, things, but sometimes it's really important to see what the potential is and start and standardized testing will help with okay. that. Um, just asking the teacher questions, um, you know, how is my child doing? What do you think is the struggle? Um, and then, you know, coming to a center like mine and, and taking a placement test or a diagnostic test and finding out, um, you know, if there are true struggles in those first through fifth grade that needs to be addressed right away. You see so many students. You mm -hmm. have so many students coming through and you've seen the success because I've seen you post, mm -hmm. you know, some the achievements of your students. When a student comes in that is struggling mm -hmm. and you know their their self esteem is low, I mean, what yeah. do you, yeah. you know, what do you tell us? I mean, what this really does, and they hide it too, right. don't they? Right. Okay. One of the things that I am I am truly a believer of is when our children feel success or feel confident that they can take on school. There are a lot of leadership skills that come along with that right and um, I have had many 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 students cry at, while I'm testing them because the work is just too hard for them to do at home um, or the homework that's coming from school is just too hard the testing is too hard um, so it's really really important to approach it in a very gentle manner I tell parents that sometimes they just don't have the tools in the toolbox to do well on these tests. So let's address those skills first and then move on to the challenging things that are happening in school. Because schools have state requirements. They have to follow the requirements. They have 20 to 30 kids in the classroom or even sometimes more. Uh, teachers only have so much time to take care of your child. Right. Um, so I know. you have to kind of step out of the school will take care of my child mentality and step into what can I do as a parent to help my child. And, and learning centers, tutoring centers, um, there are a lot of independent tutors out there that does this. Um, I just know that my program has a curriculum to really help the students get to grade level and beyond grade level. About 50% um, of our students in our center are working above grade level. And can you imagine? 50%? 50, that would be, and even yes. probably more at this point. Um, I would think can you imagine the confidence that a student can get when they know that when they walk into a classroom, they know what's going to happen and they know what they can do with the skills that they've gained at the center. Right. I think the most anxiety you get is when you, um, you are presented every day, Monday through Friday, right? Right. In a situation where you feel like you, you cannot compete with your peers. And yes. I think as they get older, that gap, they start to get, and then they find other things to do yeah. to compensate for that. Yes, and I see a lot of kids in, you know, first through seventh grade doing okay, mm -hmm. and then they really struggle in high school. You know, the, the school grades are great, but then um, in those first through seventh grade or eighth grade, and then high school hits and really struggling. So what, what do they do? They take the easier path to graduation. If a child is really strong in math and reading skills, they're not going to take the easier path because it's, they will think it's easy. It's too easy. I want to take those challenging classes. Right. That, so there's a fork develops, you know, easy path or the hard path. And the hard path have, um, you know, advanced classes that will prepare them for college. So Or even take is, college uh, courses, or, right? Or even go to college. Yeah. yeah. So 
um, as you can tell, I'm a strong believer of that kindergarten through fifth grade being an incredible space where they can build those foundation skills so that they can succeed in fifth through 12th grade and college. You, you mentioned something about anxiety. Um, a lot of students struggle with anxiety, and part of that is is at, you know academic anxiety because they don't feel like they're good in math, they don't feel like they're good in reading, um, they don't um, you know parents see them struggle and parents don't know what to do, and a negative mindset gets developed regarding learning, and right. that translates into anxiety, and and students seek coping mechanism because they're feeling anxious about school, studying, learning. Yeah, and then as they get older too, you know, the students will find other avenues, as you mentioned. Okay, you say, you know, kindergarten through fifth. Okay, so we're sitting here and you've got a sixth or seventh grader, mm -hmm. and they come to Kuman Learning Center like, look, I'm discovering, you know, my, mm -hmm. my child is pretty, pretty behind mm -hmm. and having all these anxieties. You go in, Mm -hmm. And you test them, and are you looking? What are you looking for? Is something that was a, a step that was missed? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So, from a standpoint of a sixth grader and beyond, we always test to see how strong the foundation skills are, and we fix that. If the if the foundation is not strong, we have to fix it. Math is a build building up skill, right? You right. have you know your addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. You can use that to do fractions, and you can do that. Use that to do uh, four operations that comes right before algebra, and you use those skill set for algebra, precalculus, geometry, and beyond. So those skill sets have to be strong before we can expect a child to do advanced math. I still. Not letting them use computer. I mean, a calculator. No. Okay. Can you imagine? <laughs> you go to Kumon Learning Center, and you do not get to use calculators. You have to do it all up here. Yeah. And you, I can't even imagine. Uh, I mean, I we didn't have the calculators that the, mm -hmm. the technology was growing up, but we had to learn our all of that time Facts, tables yeah. and stuff like that. You, it was a little chart. I, I, but today, I mean, do you get parents that are like, "What do you mean my kid doesn't get to use?" Yeah, yeah, and I convince parents that the children are bright enough to do this in, in their head. And um, okay. rote skills are really important for advanced math, and that's, that's what differentiates a, a student from being a great math student and a below average math student. That confidence that gets built up because okay. of being able to calculate is pretty cool. Math is all about problem solving, right? It's right. It's all about problem solving. And a lot of kids struggle with word problems right. because they don't understand the concepts. Right. So some students are struggling with reading and, and struggling with math, right? Okay. And when that happens, word problems are super difficult. And Common Core is, is the newest math program that's available in schools now. Um, it requires students to have a str strong um, language ability. And if they are lacking in language ability and they're lacking in math skills, guess what? Yeah. They're going to struggle in Common Core. So that's why it's really important to build those skills early on so that they don't struggle later on. Okay. Okay, Bensi. With COVID, mm -hmm. that has changed everything. Learning, college, all all. Oh, our lives yeah. completely mm -hmm. now for the parents out there that are working raising a family maybe working from home and then trying to get their child to do their uh, learning online yeah because i think some are work going back and forth mm -hmm. wouldn't it be such it would be wonderful to have something of a kumon learning center available to them so t talk to the audience here of parents that are what can you do for them in this in this trying time get their kids up to par. Yeah, I totally understand. I'm a working mother. I know the challenges. I'm just very grateful that my kids are older now. <laughs> and, and one thing that I know I did um, when they were growing up is that I wanted to build independence in, in my children. Um, so uh, yes, we are in the thick of the COVID pandemic and you know, virtual schooling and, and homeschooling all of that but something to think forward um, we want to develop independent learners we want students to be able to pick up a, a book and study and do the work and what Kuman does is it really helps 
uh, to build that independence. And independence comes from knowing what's on the paper, knowing how to solve a problem, and knowing that they can do this on their own. So uh, virtual, online, um, you know, in person, all of those um, require a, a level of self-motivation to sit down and do the work. So right. if, if a student is really confident in their work, they're gonna rely less on the parent and more on themselves. And that's what we want our children to be trained and Kuman does that beautifully. Well, when you're talking with parents, being a parent myself mm -hmm. and have tried to teach my child at home, many parents struggle yeah. and they don't make them accountable. They yeah. don't get those, you know, you need to get done with this. The child starts to whine. You, got, yeah. you have siblings involved, yeah. and the whole kind, um, the whole dynamics of home. Yeah. So as parents, as parents say it's okay. Yeah. Tell them it's okay if they they're not doing well. Trying to make sure their children are learning at home. Right, and 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 it is this is a season that we're in. You know, be patient with them. It's okay that they're struggling a little bit. Get help. Get yourself help. Um, get you know, get support system for you. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, and I can be that support. My team at Kumon can be that support. Uh, there are times when students don't want to do the assignments, so my job is to make sure that they are accountable to me to get their work done. So, right. Uh, you know, it, it's it's <laughs> it's easy for me to do than a teacher that's you know trying to manage a virtual classroom with thirty kids. Um, I have a team at my center that can be a support to the parent um, again going back to that independence in whatever that they're doing in life it doesn't matter academic or non-academic things if they are independent they're going to become self learners and then they want to learn more so we're developing a culture of learning right. through building independence and you want them to be excited about learning Yes, you know, absolutely. Take on, like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to read this book. I can't, I, I, I can't wait to, you know, start this project. And if they yep. don't have that, it's probably because they don't have the, the skill to even yeah. know where to start. Our children have developed the habit of playing. We yeah. have not developed the habit of learning. And Kumon produces a habit of learning because it's daily practice. It's daily commitment. Um, you have to sit down and do the assignment. You have to keep the keep track of the time that you commit to right. to Kumon. So it's really, really important that we develop a habit of learning. Our children practices video games every day. Right, they, and they love Our, it. Yeah, right? and they love it. Our children practices social media every day, and they get hooked on it. Why can't we help our children develop a habit of learning? which mm -hmm. is what's going to take them far in life. Um, you know, you might get lucky and become right. a social media, you know, mogul, but the likelihood of that is pretty low. Um, yeah. You know, you can be really good in sports. But then again, um, I just read a statistic somewhere that 0.03% of athletes actually get a scholarship in wow. college. So wow. okay. L development of learning of uh, learning habit is, is super important I feel I, I feel the same thing and I think the foundation of your, your education I look at it this way just give them halfway f full mm -hmm. give them all the all the all the foundation and then send them out in the world and then they can go after they can go after what then but if they don't have that it, right. it holds them back and like I said I I know your children they do very well they're excited. You have one at Grand Valley? One correct? at Grand Valley, a and, freshman. Okay. And um, a one that just graduated from Calvin University. Mm -hmm. um, she's hoping to go to law school. Okay. Again, this is the girl that struggled in first grade right. with reading. Okay. Um, she was in the program for about seven, eight years. Um, you know, went to high school, did very well in high school, went on to college, did very well in college. She actually interned in at the Capitol Hill um, for John Lewis. So a, I know I saw total, the posting. I said very exciting, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a total different track than when I was sitting in front of her trying to help her before I found Kumon. Right, you I were was, trying to do it yourself, right? I was trying to do it myself, and I just knew that I just didn't have the skill set at that point in my life as a full-time working mom 
to help her and recognize what is going on with her that is 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 making her struggle um, found the methodology understood the methodology and I stuck to it um, my kiddos hated me for for yeah. <laughs> for making them do it but I am so grateful that I stuck to my belief in the program and and they're doing good right now yeah. so okay so for parents out there looking for uh, now learning about this saying you know what I'm in Kumon Learning Center tell us tell us um, Vincy what is so special let's finish this up with what's so special about I think it's special because that's why I wanted you on the show but what can you share with parents? What's so special about your learning center? Um, the biggest thing is that I have a big heart for children and I really don't like seeing them struggle. So I have set up my center, the staff, the process, um, the way that I administer the program is to really take care of the child. And I feel that I have a huge part in their life when they come into my center and mm -hmm. so our goal is to treat them with respect love and, and a deep care for their future um, so i think that's something that we like to to show our students right um, i have tough conversations with students i have tough conversations with parents because i feel that um, these students education is super important for their future um, i am wouldn't be here an Indian woman that came from India, you know, 30 years ago, um, running a, you know, businesses, um, if it weren't for my education, the education that I got as a young child, it makes a huge difference. So right. I'm very passionate about education and, and, and our students. Okay, <laughs> all right, so now for parents out there, mm -hmm. Uh, that want to learn more about your program, how can they How can they reach you? Okay. Where are you located? We are located on Plainfield. I own the center on Plainfield, um, Northeast Grand Rapids, um, uh, kuman.com. And if you search Grand Rapids North, um, it's available. Right. Um, and you can also call our center, 616-363-2880. And we can definitely get you started. <laughs> okay, anything else before we wrap this up, my dear? What would you like to say? Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, um, what do you think of the studio? I absolutely this, love it. You know, it's, it's kind of quaint and cute, right? It is very cute, very cute. <laughs> and yeah. I'm so excited. I think I, I once people start learning about Kumon Learning Center, mm -hmm. especially with the show and everything going out, I think you're gonna be hearing people, you know what, this isn't, because very reasonable, yeah, it's actually only $130 for the entire month. And oh that includes coming to the center, um, the virtual training that we offer, and um, the curriculum that we use that's been used for years. And we have about 4 million students worldwide. So it is a solid program that produces results. Okay, yeah. well, all right. For all you parents that are would like to learn more about Bensi's program, Bensi to the Rescue, and she will help you find the path to success for your children that may be struggling or you want them advanced and get ready to prepare for their adult life. I want to thank her for being here on the show. We want to wish everyone a fabulous day. This is Pamela Kine from Grand Tap Media Business TV, and we will see you next time. Take care, everyone. Wave. Yeah. All right. How was that? It was good. It was good.